Greetings, deeply loved children of God, and welcome to Storytime with Pastor Maureen. I am Pastor Maureen Howard of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Washington, Iowa, and I greet you with great joy as we come together to read the stories of the Bible, which tell us why Jesus came to save us. And we're reading the Advent Storybook, 25 Bible Stories, showing why Jesus came. And this book is written by Laura Ritchie, and it's illustrated by Ian Dale. And we are reading today the story called Slavery in Egypt. And this is from the book of Exodus, which is the second book in the Bible. And it is chapters 1 through 3. But before we read, let us read a verse from Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Well, let's begin reading the story. Jacob's family moved to Egypt and had plenty to eat during the famine because of Joseph. There were 70 people in Jacob's family at that time. They were called the people of Israel or Israelites. Abraham and Jacob's family kept growing and growing just as God had promised. After Dr Joseph grew old and died, a new Pharaoh ruled Egypt who did not remember Joseph. He saw how big the family of Jacob, or Israel, had become, and he was scared of them. He made them slaves. The Israelites, also called Hebrews, had to work very hard building cities and growing food. The new king of Egypt, was so evil that he told the Hebrew midwives who helped deliver the newborn babies to only allow girl babies to live. But the Hebrew midwives listened to God instead of the evil king. They let the boy babies live too. During this time, an Israelite woman had a baby boy. She hid him for three months, then made a special waterproof basket for him and put him on the Nile River. The baby sister, Miriam, watched the basket float. Pharaoh's own daughter found the basket with the baby crying inside. She opened him, she adopted him, and named him Moses. He grew up in the palace of Pharaoh, but he knew he was an Israelite. He became angry about the way the Egyptians treated the Israelite slaves. Then Moses made a big mistake. He killed an Egyptian who was hurting a slave. Pharaoh became very angry with him, so Moses ran away to a place called Midian, and he lived there as a shepherd. In Egypt, the Israelites cried out to God, asking him to rescue them from slavery. God heard their cries, and he was going to send a rescuer. Just as the Israelites were slaves to the Egyptians, all people are slaves to sin. We all need God to rescue us. And here's the picture. And you can see that here are the slaves right here. And these are the Hebrew people, the Israelites. And you can see they're the ones that are building these big buildings, they're the ones that are preparing the city. And here you can see a slave, a Hebrew person, an, an Israelite. And look at this. This is a whip in the Egyptian's hand. And he's going to whip 
one of God's beloved children. And Moses is watching this. And he doesn't want his own people to be beaten by the Egyptians. Look how they're hard working and how that is a heavy load for these people to be carrying. God's beloved and chosen people. And so the author Laura Ritchie asks us a question. What does it mean to be a slave? What does it mean to be a slave? And what does it mean to be free? So do you know what a slave is? And do you know what freedom is? Well, maybe you can talk to your mom and dad and ask them to discuss this with you. What is a slave? And what are we slaves to? God says that we are slaves to sin. That's right, we are slaves to sin. So what does that mean to be a slave? And what does that mean to be free? Free from being a slave. Jesus sets us free from being slaves. Yes, what a wonderful news we have this Advent season that Jesus comes to us and sets us free from slavery of sin. That's right. God loves us so much and sends Jesus. And that's the season we're in right now is the season of waiting, waiting to celebrate the arrival of Jesus as a baby born to Mary and Joseph back in the time of, uh, of, of the biblical time, born in the city of Bethlehem. And so we're celebrating that on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. But we're also waiting for Jesus to come back because he loves us so much. And so let's on the count of three say, Jesus loves me. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus loves me. Yes, deeply loved children of God. Jesus loves you. But Jesus loves all the people in the world. Yes, that's hard to imagine, but Jesus loves everybody. So let's on the count of three, say Jesus loves our neighbors too. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus loves our neighbors too. That's right. And Bethany and Ian and Laura and George, God says to you, you are my beloved people and I love you. And Eddie and Grant and Harold, God says to you, you are precious and treasured in my sight. And so beloved children of God, you have a grateful day today. It doesn't matter what the weather's like. It's raining here. It's raining here in Washington, Iowa, and we're expecting to have five inches of snow. Whether you like snow or not, it doesn't matter because God loves you. Yes, regardless of what's happening in this world, God loves you. And so have a grateful day. And if you hear this story at bedtime, then sleep well because God has you cradled in his arms. I'll see you again tomorrow for another story of what happens to Moses. Have a grateful day, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Remember, you are loved.